As we move through the cross, the blood not only purchased redemption for me, but as me. But now here's the part that I'm talking about today. This is, this is the activate. This is the day of the saint. This is the army of God message. Christ now lives in you. Christ in you is the hope of glory. So if Christ in you is the hope of glory, then what is frustrating us is the fact that we have something in us that isn't fully released because we haven't yet been trained for Christ to go through me. The moment you make that final step of realizing you're carrying something in you that is supernatural right now and your identity is different than you think it is, you already have another name in glory because your new nature actually has taken the place of an old nature that was crucified 2,000 years ago. Execution was the only remedy God could find in the universe for our condition. Not a makeover, not therapy, not counseling, death. But his love dictated that he would die in our place. So therefore, Christ in you is releasing the new nature, the new creation, the new person, and the challenge is how to make that happen through you. Does that make sense? And here's the part that I'm trying to get across. Teaching can only take you so far. Training conditions your response, and training involves getting your body and your mind conditioned to go there even when you don't feel like it. The difference between a professional and an amateur is the fact that anyone can do good when they're motivated. The professional does good even on a bad day. And that's what we need. We need some professionals. We need some people that can really go in and out of world situations and change them because they know how to carry Christ in them and release Christ through them. So, the, uh, the scope of this operation that God is about to release us to is so much bigger than anything we've ever seen. Because every one of you has an invasion assignment. You have a sphere of influence that God is sending you into. And if you want to know where it is, it's the place that you don't want to go. <laughs> because he's sending you as sheep in the midst of wolves, that means he's sending you as a person of a disposition that is not compatible with the environment that you're about to go into. But if you realize that your job is to discern environments in order to shift environments, then you become the solution to the problem in the elevator rather than a panicking person with a cell phone. The blood has purchased access for us to go higher. The blood has made a way. And so where we're about to go is, is, is into a zone of the supernatural where heaven is invading earth and inviting us into missions and assignments that are completely different than the ones we thought we had. Here's how it looks like this. You want to see how this really works here? This is planet Earth. This is second heaven. This is third heaven. Paul said he was caught up to third heaven. I'm assuming if there's a third, there must be a second and a first. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers and plexiglass pulpits. Could we move this off to the side? So I want you to see this, and then, then we're just going to have a, a moment of when the Lord was going to minister to us, and then we're going to take a lunch break and discuss the plan. Right now, this is what you have to see. Hell is under siege because the paradigm that we've always had is heaven is up there, I'm down here, and when things get really bad, I get to leave. This is a very popular theological paradigm. And it works very well in the United States. So what might make this interesting is when Jesus says, when these troublesome things begin to happen, look up because redemption is actually drawing near you. Now this is an idea that this time has come. Heaven is actually coming to earth. So 
so heaven is moving this way. Now, if you want to know about the, the Enoch anointing that Kim was prophesying, Enoch sees in the future the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints. He's coming with this company. He's coming with an army. He's coming. He sees not going out. He sees God coming in. He sees it, and then under the prophetic anointing, he says it. He says what he sees, and he sees more of what he said, and something happened. He actually began to enter into what he saw. And this one man in history literally participated in a translation out of earth into what he saw coming. Now this is the Enoch principle. A generation arises that sees tomorrow. But when they see tomorrow, they begin to enter into what they see. So Enoch sees the Lord returning and he literally goes into what he prophetically saw. This translation generation, I believe, is a generation that sees heaven coming to earth and begins to go to the throne room and begins to realize that it has access to heaven in the earth and from earth access to heaven. And they can go there. Eventually, their bodies actually go there because in the spirit, they begin to see something and then they participate in what they see. So it's a very, it's a very, it's a very fascinating thing to me that that generation is probably alive right now. And the reason I know the generation is, is alive right now is because of uh, the simple fact that from Adam, from Adam to Abraham is 2,000 years. From Abraham to Jesus is 2,000 years. From Jesus to today is 2,000 years. We have already crossed the threshold of 6,000 years of biblical history. Every 2,000 years, God births the next manifestation of his redemption in a greater measure to wrap up history. We're living right now in the last 1.5% of history because we're living at the end of the 2,000 years from Christ's first coming to his second coming, and we've got that very well historically documented. But what's fascinating to me is, when does this Enoch generation arise that sees the future and begins to enter into what they see? Begins to, in a sense, experience what they prophesy. Bring themselves into the manifestation of what they're proclaiming. The Bible says in Jude that Enoch is the seventh from Adam, which tells me that right now the seventh generation from Adam is the generation that becomes the translation generation. This is it. We're at the threshold going over. We're ending. This is just simple arithmetic. This is not something, you know, you, no one had to figure. This is actual easy to figure out. So we're now, we have people here that are seeing this seventh day, this day of the Lord. We call it a millennium, call it what you will. I believe there are people alive today who are seeing the kingdom, the glory, the government that's about to come. And they have a unique authority to bring into the present what they see in the future. They have a unique authority to manifest that which they perceive. So that translation thing is kind of interesting. So I'm really believing. Here's the amazing thing. I'm believing right now that on planet Earth you've got six billion people. You know what that means? In terms of, this is, this is exactly what this would look like. If this is 6,000 years, this is what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at this. This is the population of the Earth under 150 million at the time, 250 million at the time of Christ, goes up to the dark ages, of you know, and then the last 400 years, the population of the earth exploded to 6 billion from 1 billion. That's from the World Book Encyclopedia. Jesus said the harvest is the end. Meaning, if you really want to know God's time clock, you don't have to look at Jerusalem or Israel, look at the harvest. Right now, there's 6 billion people on the earth do you know what that means? That means that there are more people alive.